when I was researching was a little bit about the Universal Postal Union. And so there were a couple things that happened in the UPU. Um, there was, uh, in 1875, uh, the UPU, Italy joined the UPU and therefore agreed to adhere by the standards. Um, in 1874, the, the idea of putting a UPU together came into effect. Um, the, the UPU is located, for those of you who don't know, in Bern, Switzerland. It's one of the oldest organization, international organizations in the world. And it started again, like I said, with 22 members, and today it has 192 members. And what it does is it does what those bullets are up there. It creates a uniform flat rate anywhere in the world for stamps, um, it, or for postage, uh, or at the time it did. It, it mandated equal treatment to foreign and domestic mail. So if you receive, as let's say the United States receives foreign mail, you know, the United States didn't get any revenue from that stamp because they didn't sell the stamp. But once it comes into the country, they guarantee, they agree that they're going to continue to process that piece of mail till it gets to its destination. Um, and then it also said that countries keep revenue from international mail. So again, there's no splitting of the revenue. The more mail you have leaving your country, the more revenue you get from postage. Um, uh, and then also, it also uh, dictated, we talked about this earlier in Italian stamps, it dictated that stamps must have numerals. So that one's gone now, because we have the forever stamps. We do, yeah, so that may have changed. Yeah, they did valid at one point, was there not an attempt to um, have some nominal name of the country also to be on the stamp. Yeah, it did. Aside with the, from Great Britain. Great Britain, yes. And when that came into effect, yeah, Great Britain, because they issued the first postage stamp, was allowed to put just a symbol, symbology on there, the wow. Queen said. And uh, everyone else has to put their name on, the country's name on the stamp. Yeah. Correct. Um, so at the end here, I'm going to hand some stuff out, but I'm going to talk a little bit about like some uh, um, some of the challenges I had, uh, and 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 a little bit, and some of the back of the book stamps. So we'll start out with Italian airmail, and I'm going to hand out the sheet of Italian airmail from the 30s, and we'll talk about some of those stamps on there. Um, so the Italy is is known the first uh, Italy is known for uh, having the first airmail stamps issued by any country. And that is the overprinted uh, red one and purple one there on the top in the center um, there. And you can see where the flights were. It was the, um, it was, uh, it was what, the Torino to Rome. And then the second one was Naples to Palermo to uh, Naples, back to Naples. Do you know why they were first? No, I don't. But at the time, what was going on in, in, there were a lot of conventions at the UPU and in Switzerland over airmail, and they were trying to figure out how to deal with airmail because aviation was becoming such a big deal, and now all of a sudden, letters could get transported so much faster. And so countries were experimenting with it. Well, Italy just happened to be one of the first countries to do these experimental airmail. And so in the world of philately, those are considered the first airmail stamps ever created. Why in in the world, what we had ours from nineteen fourteen or something. What's the? No, I don't think so. No, we ours came out in the twenties, didn't they? First airmail U.S. was was it nineteen eighteen? Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the date on those stamps? The thirty so, seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Oh, seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, maybe that's. Kind and of they're very stuff. affordable. They the are. Area. They are not hard to. <laughs> find and yeah what they're over printing for airmail were special delivery stamps here exactly exactly yeah so um, yeah so it was a 25 cent denomination special delivery that was over printed and that's it's got c1 in the catalog uh, and then the 40 center uh, the one the second one down is a special delivery that was over printed and revalued to 25 cents 
and that was a seaplane. That was done on a seaplane. So they were experimenting with using seaplanes okay, for so, so these, uh, that. Their first stamps were 1917? Yeah. Okay, so we came in a year later. A year later, yeah. Um, and that picture of the plane is actually the one from the flight in 1917. That's what the mail was loaded on. Mm -hmm. Nice looking airplane. Um, Curiously, I just can I interject. I just looked up the Jenny stamps, mm -hmm. the first stamps. Um, C3, which is that 24 cent that had the inverse as well, right. that was first issued May 13th, 1918. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So this was 17 right. year before. Well, things that <clears throat> people don't know about that first U.S. stamp that's interesting is kind of tied to this. The 24 cent rate included uh, delivery by special delivery track. So it was an airmail special delivery stamp, delivery. even though it didn't say it. Okay. Um, and then later, that blue one on the right, that's what uh, Italian airmail stamps became after those experimental. They're not overprinted anymore. And then at the very bottom, and I'm not going to go into all the history on the Balbo flight, but uh, that's a triptych stamp, which is Greek for three. Um, and it was, it, it's basically borrowed from the art world, uh, that, that terminology. And it's, it's a set of three panels hinged together. So three stamps connected. And, um, but also I found it interesting reading that a true triptych is three, three panels that create one design, but in stamps, that's not a con con continent of design. The US, the 1776 Liberty triptych, the three stamps together make the design, make the entire design. But uh, that's, that's kind of a famous stamp, and I, that's on the sheet I passed around. Um, pneumatic stamps, you might be asking what pneumatic Quick stamps. Question. You don't show a, a Graf Zeppelin stamp, but Italy issued those, too. That's right? on the sheet? Yeah. 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 But I mean, I oh, yeah. I, I, how many, how many airmail stamps do I pick to show? No, but walking down through Milan and a couple other cities, I found well, stamp no, stores mm -hmm. in the... So the window of the stamp store were covers mm -hmm. from the Zeppelins. Oh, I'm sure. And they want anywhere from 600 up to like 1,200 uh, lira for those covers. So, I mean, uh, euros. Euros, euros yeah. Euros. Oh, yeah. 600 euros, which is more than 600 dollars. Yeah. They were really nice looking, though. If you had wanted one, I could have got one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pneumatic stamps. So there are pneumatic stamps in Italy. This is another back of the book. And you're like, what is a pneumatic stamp? Um, so it's interesting. In Rome, Milan, and Turin, several of the post offices were linked with a pneumatic tube system, believe it or not. And it allowed for rapid movement of mail around the cities. So you would put a pneumatic stamp on there, and it was a, sup a higher supplementary fee but you could get your letter across town probably a whole lot faster than if you sent it regular mail. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so in 1913 through 24, the first series, which is the top blue one, came out. And then um, in 24 to 27, they overprinted the old stock with the new denominations. And then uh, after printing moved to Rome, uh, it... It, uh, the change from typography to photograver um, was made and the new design came out in the bottom with Galileo on it. And uh, so those exist in the back. And note that in the pneumatics, there's, there are no pneumatics with arms of Savoy. There's no fasces on them or anything like that. Hmm. Uh, actually, I should say there's arms of there's Savoy, but there's no fasces on them anymore. Um, other back of the book. So we had pneumatic systems in some of the bigger cities in the U.S., but we didn't issue any postage stamps. Yeah, I don't know. France had the pneumatic, too. Did they? Okay. Anyways. Uh, the next one is, uh, this, these are some other back of the books. These are uh, Paki, or Pachi. Uh, they're parcel post stamps. Uh, top left there, the ones that are split. Um, Note, there's symbology in the middle. If you look at 
this one versus that one, they're different. Mm -hmm. That's different years. So you have to pay attention when you're collecting these to the symbol. But the hard thing is, is they're meant to be ripped apart because the left side would go on the package and the right side would go on the receipt that said parcel post was paid for. So therefore you see more of the right hand side. Um, so that's kind of a that's kind of an interesting challenge in Italy, and they're always more desirable in pairs. Uh, and usually you see a mint, obviously, because they weren't postally used. That's how they survived mint. Occasionally you will find them canceled in pairs because mm -hmm. uh, somebody just didn't follow the rules and put both of them on the envelope. Uh, the BLP overprint there on the top right that is for Buste Lettre Postali, and it was a it sold at below face and it was used on special advertising cards which i've seen i don't have one and the advertising cards um raised money for um for uh raised money for uh veterans uh of the war and, and or of wars and helped other other uh, other people, but anyways. So there's this BLP series. They're listed in in semi postal. They're actually considered semi postal because they they um, uh, that's just where they list them. But one thing to note about the BLP stamps is they're uh, they're highly forged. <laughs> For example, that stamp right there, that blue one, is a seven hundred and twenty five dollar stamp catalog. <laughs> Um, and I don't own any, but I have no idea if that forgery is correct or not. I guess the point is, is if you're going to get into those, it might be a good idea to buy certified stamps or at least ones that you have pretty good knowledge or, are correct. Uh, the Saint God, Saint Gasse or Seg, Segnatase stamps on the bottom left, those are postage due stamps. So those you'll see in the catalog is postage due. And then the bottom right one, the yellow buff colored one, that's the only newspaper stamp issued by Italy. They only issued one. There's some that look very similar and those are in one of the states. What's so the design in the, in the center that's embossed? It's what two. It? It's the number oh, two, the cent number two. due for like, two cents. Okay. Yeah, two cents was the rate at the well, time. What year was that issued? Uh, I'd have to look in my book, but uh, very early, late 1800s, very early. Uh, see. 1862. Um, 62. Okay, next I'm going to talk a little bit about difficult stamps to collect. And these are just my, I'm going to go into my experiences <laughs> collecting stamps, and I'm going to pass these around. These, I just want to give you an idea as we're going through the difficult stamps. What I put together here on the last few pages are Italian stamps like by decade. There's some from the 30s. Uh, I didn't put, we talked a lot about the 40s, so that was all the Hitler, Mussolini stuff. Uh, I didn't include that because I already sent it around. I have stamps from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and then a souvenir sheet from 2002. And it's just to give you guys an idea of what Italian stamps look like uh, instead of going through my entire collection and just I, th I just think they're interesting and they're pretty and sometimes you know the 70s are ugly <laughs> like a lot of countries but but just to give you guys an idea so a little bit about difficult stamps talked about the 50s there so in the 1950s as as Italy was getting back on its feet these stamps are really uh, these stamps can be really difficult to find they're they're from the period from about 48 to 53 they're not particularly expensive um, but they can be a bugger. Um, they're usually, you almost never find them complete in a collection. You won't find a collection with all of them. And by, for me to get them all, I had to search out singles, a lot of singles, and you're gonna pay closer to catalog for them or 50% or, or above. Um, and the catalog price ranges from just a few dollars to a hundred dollars is the most expensive one. There's a 125 lira one early on that's a hundred dollars catalog. Um, but three to five dollar range is very common for the stamp. 
If you look at the sets, the set down here in the bottom, well, uh, this set here, there's a, they get a lot of the purple and blue, and usually the higher, the, the blue one, the higher denomination is always the more valuable one. Um, I think there's probably, I think it's just a few dollars for the one on the left and the one on the right is like a 50, 50 plus dollar stamp. Um, but that single page right there, that catalogs at $155. So, so is this part of the era in which um, false cancellations? No, no, the false cancellations tend to disappear here. The favor <coughs> stuff is during the war in the, in the 30s and 40s. Uh, and, and by the 50s, that kind of disappears after it's, Italy becomes a republic. So that's a period that can be kind of hard to collect are in the, Italy. Are the canceled stamps more often um, higher catalog value than the, the mint? Usually they are, but not always. But yeah, usually they are. <laughs> this is a set. This is a set of official stamps. It's the only set of officials issued by Italy, o, Scott 01 through 08. And for me, the 10 lira was the hardest one to find. So unfortunately, I ended up with the thing all canceled except for the 10 lira. I didn't even have the 10 lira. <clears throat> and often I competed with several bidders for that 10 lira stamp. Um, but I just personally, I chose to collect the entire set canceled rather than mint because that's how I had the majority of it. Um, I eventually got, obviously got, got it. Um, and this set here catalogs at 177 mint and $480 used. So you can, you, you're not gonna pay 480 for it, I'll tell you that. It's like everything else in the Scott catalog, you're paying a percentage of the catalog. But there's a, there's a good example of a difference between a, a used and a mint. Um, <coughs> but just a hard, harder set to find in the back of the book. There's a set of the parcel posts, and they're all, again, I talked about how they're almost always found in singles. This is the 1927 to 39 issue, and there's the fasces in the center where the perforation is. Um, a used single can catalog, so a single of either side, so this is weird how the catalog does this. Doesn't matter really the denomination, but a used single from any denomination is only roughly 40 cents in the catalog. But a pair starts out at 325 for a pair and goes up from there. So, like I said, the pairs are much more desirable. The pairs are all, yeah. all unused. It, mine are, yeah, you will find them used. I do have some used. But for example, like this page here, this isn't too hard to find. Used, I, I don't remember how much the thing is used. I'd have to look it up. But the set mint catalogs at thirty-eight dollars, so it's not a terribly hard or expensive set to find. So where where is the ones about the fasces? I, I don't see just them. earlier years. Um, sometimes there's nothing. There's a two dots and a line in between. There's some that, that have. There's some that have like a, a, a yeah a symbol. Okay. So yeah. There are various. Th there are various. Okay. Uh, the next one. Oh, let me make sure. Okay, there we go. The next one was a series called Italy at Work, and it was originally issued in 1950, and it was a set of 19 stamps. And I think they're really pretty, the set of Italy at Work. Um, and they were issued in 1950 with a winged wheel mar watermark. But in 57, those crazy things were reissued with the new star watermark. And it was the first set to have the star watermark on it. And I, it's not one of these stamps, but I wanted to show you guys what the star watermark looks like. The nice thing about Italy is the star watermark is always super easy to see with nothing, with just some natural light, and you could see that watermark. If it doesn't have that watermark on it, it's got the winged wheel watermark on it. Um, Did they reissue the entire set? No, they only issued those stamps, those, those uh, what, seven stamps? Uh -huh. Um, so, as an example, uh, for me, the 65 cent, I, Steve can attest to this, I looked for this thing forever and finally had to pony up the money to buy it. 
Uh, I, I would dig through every blue stamp I had and flip them, flip them over. I asked Steve. I dug through all his stamps. Couldn't find it. The 65 lira. The first six are 25 cents each used. So they're minimum Scott catalog. The 65 lira at the end, that green one, is a $35 stamp. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why. <laughs> but it was impossible to find. It was a pain in the neck. <laughs> Um, this one here, this was another challenging stamp to find, and this goes back to the very early 1800s, the, the stamps with um, uh, the king on them. This is a number 72, 5 lira from 1891 to 96, um, and it can be hard to find, especially with a legitimate cancel. I believe mine's got a legitimate cancel on there, mm -hmm. just looking at it. And having seen a lot of favorite cancels are just usually a quarter, you know, a corner or a quarter of a cancel. That one's a sock on the nose, pretty much. Um, the perforations aren't perfect, but that's pretty common with some of the stamps. And another very common thing is the centering is often off on a lot of the early stamps. They just weren't, the Italians had started printing these, and they just didn't do a very good job of managing the centering. So you can expect to pay more for a well-centered stamp, and you can, and then the perforations, the cleaner they are, they obviously, the better they are, but you can see on the bottom left, the perfs are nibbed there. Um, this stamp catalogs at $85 mint and $230 used. Um, and there's a, there's a few denominations in that kind of era that, um, that there's a significant price difference in a mint versus used. There's a the series right before this, I think the stamp is just a hundred and some mint and it's over a thousand dollars used catalog. So um, I already passed this around. We talked about this. This was a difficult stamp for me to find because of the three shades. Um, it's often forged. We talked about it being Sardinia number 11. Uh, imperf, which is forged, and Sardinia number eleven catalogs for four fifty mint and twenty four dollars used. Mm. So you can and uh, this one catalogs at eight thousand dollars mint and three hundred and twenty five dollars used. So you can imagine why somebody would take a four dollar stamp and try and turn it into an eight thousand dollar stamp. Mm. So wait a second, the mint was. The mint, the mint Sardinia is 450. The mint Italy number no. one, perfed correctly, is eight thousand dollars. Why would somebody cancel it? Well, they may have had a canceled uh, Sardinia and tried to perf it, and make it look like a canceled oh, okay. Italy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're probably less likely to get a counterfeit canceled stamp, but a mint stamp certainly. You better make sure that thing's certified. <laughs> Um, I, I ended up, to get mine on piece, I ended up buying mine from Europe. I bought it actually from Italy. It took a little bit of a risk because the postage could not always be great coming out of Italy. But I think I got it out of northern Italy uh, and got, got it. It took about a month to get over here, but I got it. And I was pretty happy. This one, Steve, you can attest to this crazy stamp. <laughs> So this one, I almost think of this as an air stamp. This is a silly Scott 460, and it was surcharged in 1945. And I couldn't determine why, but I assume it was done, the surcharge was done with extra Scott, extra stock of Scott 224, which was a 175 lira, and it was revalued to 250. But you can see, they have the fasces on them. They've been they've been overprinted, but you can see the one on the left has seven bars on the left and the right, and the one on the right has six bars on the left and seven yeah. bars on the right. Yeah, yeah. That's the difference between the two. Um, got this one out of Hungary. I think we found it. Isn't that one where I ended up with two of them? No, you, I saw it. I sent it to you. You said I already bought it. You bought it right away. The whole page. We bought an entire page of stamps just to get that stamp. So, but I can't find. Yeah, I haven't seen it since. I have. I see it in collections, and it's always seven bars on the left. 
And so I have no idea. I haven't read any of the Italian literature on that stamp. But the funny thing is, is the seven bar version is 25 cents and the six bar version is only $2.50 catalog. <laughs> and it's the hardest dang stamp to find. So it is listed in Scott? It is listed in Scott as a, um, it's a 460A. It's a sub, sub number. Where are the bars? The bars, the, the bars that cover the old denomination. These oh, bars, oh, one, okay. two, three, okay, four, four really five, six. Okay, I can't really see them. Yeah, that's okay, but there's six on that. So that's what I'm talking about with the bars. So you know where it's lowered, well, actually there's a height difference, obviously. The height difference. Yeah, there's a height difference. Yeah, it's pretty easy to see. <laughs> so you have stamps with six bars on both sides? Uh, I don't have. I don't think it's listed in my. I have a general Sasson catalog. It's not listed in there. I think it's in a specialized, and I don't have a copy of a specialized. Huh. I didn't do a lot of homework on that stamp. I just again, this is my personal experience. This yeah. thing was a pain in the neck to find this stamp. Well, and there's yeah. no six bar six is bar. It? No, there's no six bar six bar. <laughs> it must have been a printing error for six on the left, seven on the right. This set. This set is another hard set to find. I don't even know if my overprints are necessarily real. I think they are. Um, these are four overprinted definitive stamps. They're Scott 142A to, one, to 142D. Uh, they were issued June 4th, 1922. They're the philatelic issue promoting the ninth Italian philatelic congress held in Trieste. So it's a philatelic congress in Ooh. Trieste. There were only 15,000 sets printed. They were only sold in the central post office in Trieste between June 4th and June 10th. So they were only on sale for six days. We all know what that's gonna do to the price of a stamp. And they were no longer valid for postage after November 30th. So five months later, <laughs> they were invalid for postage. Um, I've seen sets online where the the overprints look different. Mine all look the same, which is, I think, a good thing, unless it's the same guy who forged them all. <laughs> um, but I've seen them where the 22, the 1922 just does not look right, and the other three are different, and one's off. You're probably looking at a forged stamp. Um, this might be a set I have authenticated. I bought it in Ger out of Germany. Um, I think I stumbled across it, because it was a buy it now, and I just ponied up for it. But um, mine is actually, the gum on the reverse of mine is cracked from the ma old mounts. You know how the gum gets that brown crackle mm -hmm. on it? So it's, the gum's not in perfect condition, but there's no hinge remnant on mine. Mm -hmm. Mine are unhinged. Uh, the stamp mint is valued at $1,235, and mint never hinged at $3,125. Mm -hmm. I'm sure my gum cracked probably drops a lot, but yeah, that would be disturbed gum. <laughs> would be disturbed gum. But still, it's yes. a very expensive set of stamps. I think it's really unhelpful when Scott puts something like counterfeits exist. I mean, that, how helpful is that? It's not. You can say a little more about it. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was a hard set to find. Many counterfeits. That's more. That's better than just counterfeits. <laughs> And then this one, I think we're near the end here. Uh, this is Scott 170. This is the five lira uh, Alessandro Menzoni that we talked about earlier. Um, this one, the reason why I put this stamp in here is because you can find it, but you're going to pay a bit for it. And it was the last stamp I collected to complete my front of the Italy collection. So I have everything except those advertising labels. I have all the stamps from number one to two. I have it through 1997, I think. All that, the stamps. Is that, yours? Is that, the one that is my stamp. Yeah. That's very well centered. Yeah, it is. Um, and anyways, that one, uh, that was the last stamp I bought. I bought it again over in Europe. I think from Belgium. I saw it in an auction over there, and uh, it is the high value, and it wasn't used very much. Um, I've seen a lot of favor cancels on it because it's worth all three times as much canceled, I believe. Uh, it catalogs for 725 mint and 3,950 used. 
So again, my message here is if you're gonna, if you see it used, it's probably a favor cancel on there, not a legitimate cancel. Is, is that, but, are those toning marks on there? Yeah, there is a little toning on the very left. Again, it's what you wanna pay. Sure. Yeah, right here you can see there's a tiny little bit of toning oh, there and there. Oh, right just yeah, just right. a little bit and maybe in the right, yeah, in the bottom right. That might be the photograph too. You can look at the stamp, I have it here. But again, it, that was just kind of a, a stamp I held out on for a long time and it was the last one I got. So, but it was a challenge. All right, when did they switch to the Euro for their stamps? Oh. 2002? Yes. Somewhere in two, I think yeah, it, it was. Showing the double denomination. Yeah, so it shows double denomination, it shows lira and euro, and then it switches to only euro. Yeah. And that's it. Nice. So, sorry that took longer, a lot longer than <laughs>